Welcome to our Enterprise Blockchain, the Path to Monetization Workshop. Um, my name is Guido Molinari, and I'm the managing partner at Prison Group. In today's workshop, we are going to be discussing with a number of uh, industry leaders that are going to be joining us over the next three hours. Uh, I'm going to be kicking things off with a brief, brief introduction about us, Prison Group, and presenting a couple of frameworks that we can use. Uh, when thinking about some of the insights that um, the better speakers are going to be sharing with us this afternoon. Um, and then uh, I'm going to be leading uh, uh, the first uh, uh, set of fireside chats uh, where we're going to have joining us uh, Mariana Gomez de la Villa from ING Bank, Dimitro Migliorati from Banca Mediolanum, Olaf Ransom from Finality International, and Ricardo Surbiani from Microsoft. Uh, after that, I'm going to be uh, leading, uh, giving the um, the floor to my colleague Rick Cataldo, who is going to be hosting a session with speakers joining us from Ireland and the US East Coast. Uh, we're going to be having with us Jaron McGowan from WeTrade, Shyam Nagarajan from IBM, Chen Zer from Ernst & Young, and Daniel Wilson from TradeLens, um, and uh, uh, Mark Treshock from IBM Pharmaceutical Utility Network. Uh, after that, I'm going to be coming back and uh, with me, there's going to be um, another set of speakers joining us from the US Midwest and the Rockies. Uh, among them, uh, there's going to be Adam Kaplan from Salesforce, Merrick Vance from United Healthcare, the Synaptic Health Alliance, and David Post from IBM, Trust Your Supplier. We're going to then uh, take some uh, key takeaways uh, together with uh, Kathy Barrera, our founding economist at Prison Group, and we're going to draw some conclusions together from today's workshop. Our, our next speaker is Daniel Wilson. Very excited to have Daniel on here. He's from TradeLens. He is the head of strategy and operations. He's joining us from New York. Very happy to have uh, Daniel on today. Hey, Daniel, how are you? Yeah, good, I read. How are you? Very good. Uh, Daniel leads strategy and operations for TradeLens platform. He's, he's originally, I believe you're from New Zealand, if I remember correctly, and uh, you're a global citizen, much like myself. You've held positions uh, uh, in Hong Kong and Denmark, and sounds like you've worked all over the world. So very happy to have you here. Um, would you be able to give a 60 second overview for those that are not familiar with TradeLens? Yeah, sure thing. And, and thanks very much for this opportunity. In a, in a nutshell, uh, TradeLens is focused on the supply chain industry. Uh, so we've got a particular focus on, on containerized freight. Uh, and when you, know, you look at that industry, 90% of all things that you look around where you are right now in your, in your homes or, or perhaps in, a, in, a, in an office or what have you, 90% uh, of all those things will have been in a container at some point in its life. So container shipping is, is very important, but it's incredibly inefficient. As many as 30 organizations have something to do with that container journey uh, from beginning to end, and they all speak to each other using different protocols and mostly using paper. So TradeLens's main vision is to connect that entire ecosystem, standardize the way that we communicate, uh, and allow for that innovation that comes from when we all speak on a common set of, of language and protocol. That's in a nutshell what we're trying to do. Wonderful. Yeah, I absolutely love the project. So just a note to the audience, um, TradeLens is one of the more advanced networks today. So really happy that we can, that we can get uh, feedback from projects at, at different stages. Um, so first question, Daniel, in order to reach monetization phase, you first had to, which you're currently in, you first had to build a network, the Rails, in a network such as yours and many others, you can't necessarily monetize that actual network layer, which is really a theme of some of these conversations today. At what point did you realize that monetization was going to occur at the application layer? And how did you go about identifying your first two killer apps? Yeah, great question. I, I want to take a step back and, and give a little bit of context to those on the call who, again, might not have a supply chain, a supply chain background. TradeLens emerged uh, a little over three years ago as initially a project to see how we could improve the efficiencies of Maersk Line, uh, the world's largest shipping company, uh, which is also uh, one of the partners or the, one of the two partners in TradeLens alongside IBM. Uh, and we realized that even though there are inefficiencies in the way that we do our business and the way that we re relate with our customers, it's not unique to our relationships. It's something that's writ large across the entire ecosystem. So what we wanted to do was figure out if there was a way to build a solution for the industry uh, to really fix those key challenges of information uh, inefficiencies. And to give you a little bit of context, it's now cheaper to pay for the operational movement of goods around the world 
than it is to deal with the administrative cost in that container movement. Um, and that's basically because the operational side has become very efficient, uh, but the information side hasn't followed because of some of the challenges that, that I'm sure we'll get to. So what we recognized was that connecting the ecosystem in and of itself would have inherent value. And so what we, what we decided to do was take a platform approach uh, to build a neutral, functionally a neutral operating system for the industry. So the first thing that we do is we go out and we connect to the ecosystem. And those 30 organizations that I mentioned earlier, those different archetypes, we go and connect to them. So today our network has two thirds of the world's global container volumes committed to it. We've got over 120 ports and terminals, more than two dozen customs authorities, thousands of miles of rail, uh, and a growing ecosystem of importers, exporters, their banks and their insurers. So we go out, we connect to them. It seems simple, uh, but something as simple as what is the port code for the port of Newark, which is the, I think the port closest to me, has a different answer depending on who you ask. Like we can deal with that ambiguity as humans, but computers can't. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is we move to a platform to take those data to a platform, be it events or documentation, uh, and essentially put an, an encryption layer around that to make sure that the data remains mutable. Uh, and that the data can only be seen by the right parties. And the way that we think about it is that those two layers together, as I said, work as that neutral operating system. Uh, but really, just like any operating system, it has inherent value that needs to be realized. So the two applications that we've started with, the first one's called TradeLens Core, and the second one is the TradeLens Evil of Lading Solution. What we did with those was to say, what are the fundamental capabilities and data that the ecosystem need to do its current job more efficiently uh, and then to do new things in the future. So with TradeLens Core, we can deliver to you actionable information direct from the source via API or user interface. That sounds like a small, uh, small step forward, but for our industry, most of the time spent is not spent on solving problems and creating new ways of doing business and new value add. It's spent chasing the same five questions mostly around where are my goods? So we can answer those questions to start with. And then we give you actionable capabilities to do different things with those data to make that valuable for you. But the thing is, whatever we think about doing with those data, be it container statuses or documents or what have you, anyone can think of anything to do with those data, be it supply chain optimization tools or what have you. And so what we're doing is saying, look, this is what we can do. This is the way that the data is structured. Here are the open standards, go and build your own solution. So we see TradeLens Core as being uh, like the technological and ecosystem primitive that will unlock new functionalities in the future. The other application that I mentioned is the e-bill of lading solution. And in our industry, the e-bill of lading is a weird thing, which basically is a, a, a unit of title. So today, if you hold up a piece of paper, you literally have title to the stuff and the goods. And that's like a very, I would say 20th century, but it's more like 17th century way of managing information. We think with the blockchain technology that we have and the ecosystem support that we have from shipping lines and banks and the importers and exporters themselves, we can digitize not just the information, but the title that sits behind it too. And you need that if you want to do things like financing or just have basic transactions with your counterparties. So again, those are fundamental capabilities that over time will unlock future applications. They were the necessary fundamental building blocks before you can do anything else. Wonderful, Daniel. Um, we talk a lot about prioritization of, of use cases of what are the first initial apps that they that they really need to set that groundwork. So um, maybe they, they make additional apps less cost, costly or more effective over time. So these two apps, the core, uh, TradeLens Core, TradeLens e eBill, um, how have they opened up opportunities to, for you guys to maybe add on additional apps that might be more, um, that, that might bring, that might allow you to monetize in a better way or a different way? Yeah, so uh, we see TradeLens, <clears throat> both Core and the eBill of Lading as being things that we can use as a uh, launching ground for different applications that we build. Um, and there's more information on, on that on our, on our website. Uh, but the thing that I'm more interested in is what we can unlock for the industry itself. So this is deliberately not a, a, a walled garden. 
we have put all of the technical information up online and we deliberately want to make it so that it is as easy as possible to interact with the TradeLens platform. So in the future, if you have an idea on what to do with supply chain data and you have the permission to access that data, you can do basically whatever you can think of. So there are a bunch of different things that we're looking at. There are integrations with uh, trade financing platforms so that instead of sending like an inch thick stack of paper to your bank whenever you need to file or present present for a letter of credit you can do that digitally this is great for you because it's a pain in the neck to have to deal with that much paper but it's great for the bank who don't have to spend their time trying to read the paper or use ocr technology to turn that into actionable data um, we're also looking at other uh, uh, instances in the uh, financial services space with insurance because again insurance is basically just an information game understanding risk, understanding when things go wrong, all of that is information. And we have that information on trade lens, and that's what we're looking to do. There are also other things that we can do in the supply chain optimization space. All of it comes down to the same point, which is, do we have the information and is the information correct? And those are the questions that are answered yes, both times by what we have on trade lens. Fantastic. Um, and I'm sure a number of people are gonna be looking at that, that website and see how they can get involved. Uh, last question, we have about two and a half minutes. Really want to ask you this. You're digitizing one of the world's oldest industries, uh, which is trade. Um, how does the COVID-19 crisis highlight the need for any um, overdue updates to this industry? I referenced before the paper that is involved in a typical supply chain transaction. And the thing that spurred TradeLens uh, on um, in many respects a few years ago was a researcher who worked with MERSC and followed from start to finish the life of goods in a supply chain transaction. And you can look it up on YouTube. He jumps on the back of a moped and follows the container around. It's quite charming. But the amount of interaction that happens on a face-to-face -face basis and on a paper basis is colossal. There are very few countries in the world who can truly claim that the end-to-end -end process that they have in managing goods is entirely paperless. So that's like the context that our industry exists in. What we're seeing with COVID, of course, is that the normal ability to interact with customers is, and, and any other participant in the supply chain is made that much more difficult because people are working from home. People understandably don't want to touch uh, goods or things that are handed to them, which may or may not uh, have a virus on them. So in the first instance, there is a genuine concern that the current essentially gears of trade grind to a halt when you can't have that paper in place. And so you're seeing considerable moves around the world uh, in order to try and digitize that, including in India, Brazil, Saudi Arabia, big countries who have particular reliance on paper-based products. So that's where we're seeing a lot of, a lot of positive movements. But just a, a slightly more prosaic example is, you know, we have interruptions in our supply chains all the time. Fortune 500 companies, all the way down to the smallest ones, have to have buffer stocks. And they are anywhere between 30 and 90 days of their existing stock. And the reason for that is there might be a port strike somewhere or a storm might blow through an area or what have you. There could be a, any, any number of interruptions to, to your supply chains. Today, without trade lens, if you want to try and figure out what's going on and, and what's happening with your cargo, you have to spend a lot of money and time trying to get to the bottom of that just to be reactive and just to find out what's happening. With trade lens, what you're seeing is customers who use the, the platform are able to get access to those supply chain interruptions much sooner than they previously did. And instead of being reactive to that, they're now able to act proactively with their customers in mind. And in doing so, reduce the overall burdens on their supply chain. And in the long term, reduce the working cost of capital that they have to deal with. That is an incredible unlocking of value in the supply chain. And that's what makes us excited at TradeLens. Absolutely. So thank you very much for, uh, for that, Daniel. I'm very much interested in learning more about the incentives of all the different stakeholders joining that because I'm, I'm sure you'll be displacing some maybe agents or people working at the port. So it's, it's really great to follow that disruption. So um, thank you very much for joining us today. And we really look uh, forward to following the project and the success over the next few years. Thanks very much, Reid. Thanks for everyone's time.